Hello and welcome to this video series on object-oriented programming. In this video series, we're going to focus on discussing what is object-oriented programming or object-oriented principles. You may hear the term uh, OOPS, which is short for double OP. You may also hear terms such as polymorphism, encapsulation, instantiation, abstraction, and inheritance. These are all big terms, but through these series of videos, we're going to take our time to discuss what these terms all are and more practically uh, put it into practice and code out what these terms mean. We'll also take a look at the structure of a class. You'll see that an object is synonymous with a noun, a person, place, or thing. And so we'll look at how do we create a class that represents a noun and the structure of a class. So things such as getter methods, setter methods, constructors, overloaded constructors, two string methods, and working methods. So stay tuned and we'll dive into the wonderful world of object-oriented programming. So what is double OP, object-oriented programming? It's a way of organizing your code to focus on real world nouns, person, place, thing, and even an idea. Um, up until this point, we've been really writing our code in a linear, top to bottom fashion within our main method. Our main method will execute when we start our program, and it'll run every statement from the top to the bottom. But object-oriented program is a little different in the sense that we're going to organize our code uh, in a modular way that focuses on nouns, uh, person, place, thing, or an idea. And so typically you will put a noun or what would be synonymous with a class into a file and begin to give it properties and methods. Um, and we're going to do an example of this, but object-oriented programming is a different way of structuring your code. Here's a good video uh, that's uh, from uh, what used to be Linda, which is now LinkedIn Learning, uh, that gives a, a brief introduction to um, object-oriented programming. It's a different spin or a different take, and I would encourage to, to get different perspectives. So if you may, go ahead and pause this video, watch the video that I have here on the lecture uh, slide, um, and then uh, we'll pick back up here. So here's a short activity. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide here, but again, whenever you're given a prompt, and this is an actual example uh, from a site that I've built uh, in the past. Let's see if I can pull it up here. So the site that uh, I'm currently on is called MPLS Renters. Uh, and this is a site where the back end of this, this, this site uh, has different objects. It has a renter, it has apartment, uh, it has uh, another uh, different types of objects, but the code is structured in an object-oriented manner. And so this prompt that I'm sharing is a, is a real prompt that I've struggled, or not I've struggled with, but I've actually gone through this process myself of figuring out how do I organize the code for this application. So in this case here, what we have is a prompt and we want to identify all the objects. And again, remember, uh, objects in this case are synonymous with nouns. So what I'd like for you to do is pause this video and to see if you can identify all the different objects uh, in this prompt here. And then the second thing I want you to do is find all the different properties uh, that you will see in this prompt or this, this write-up of this uh, coding description. All right, so here, let's go ahead and identify a few of the nouns. I'm not going to identify all of them here, but just the main ones that we'll focus on in this. We may have found all the nouns in this description here, but let's just focus on a few of them here. All right, so the first one here, uh, apartments, I'll circle that one. Uh, you may have considered profile or prospective renter. That would be one. A 
what you may find is that perspective render as well as profile may be one in the same. Um, somebody said one time application. That could also be one of our nouns. Let's take a look at the properties here. What are some of the different properties that we can identify? Um, and it's pretty easy in this prompt here. Uh, we could say that for an apartment, we have name, we have address, we have floor count, we have region of city, we have estimated rent, um, and then um, for a prospective renter, we have pretty much the same thing here, but some different properties here. So preferred region of city, preferred number of bedrooms, and preferred baths. So this is the approach, and it's a different approach into structuring up your code, but you're gonna to begin to organize your files uh, in your code along these lines of uh, the different objects. And an object or a class can have um, methods and it can have properties. And so here in this case, we'll focus on a prospective renter and an apartment. But I'll code out a prospective renter just to get an idea of how that's done. So this next slide here, it's a bunch of terminology, encapsulation, instantiation, abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance. Um, that's a lot. And so in these videos here, we'll unpack what is instantiation will impact unpack what is encapsulation but i think it's best that we actually go through a different a few coding examples uh, to get an understanding of some of these terms before we code out this prompt let's just talk a little bit more about classes and objects um, and then we'll uh, look at a basic class and um, how we would actually apply the various properties and methods So here's a class structure. Uh, in the class, you have attributes, and then you also have methods. So here's our attributes, string name, age, gender, interest, and then our methods, bio, and greeting. And that's the, the basic structure of a class, right? So we took the noun in this case, which is a person, and then that person has a name, age, gender, interest, and then the methods are essentially working methods that take action on behalf of the class. So if we go back to the example of this prompt of MPLS renters, uh, I have some code here. Let me jump back here, the renters. So here's our version of a renter. Um, you'll see that I named the class renter. I gave it an access modifier of public. I have to use a reserve keyword of class. And then here's the various properties that I've assigned to a renter. Now, also, I can have methods. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to calculate um, or give this renter a particular validation score. I could put a method that would do some type of calculation of that. Um, or I can do a method that would actually format the name of this renter. If they put a name in of both their first and last name, the method could be structure out name and it would separate the first and last name. And so the methods work on behalf of the class, but essentially this would be how it would actually code out a class. And this is the syntax of a, of a class uh, in Java. I want to pause the video here. And in the next video, we're going to talk more about these properties. Uh, and something called encapsulation, but then also we're going to dive into something called instantiation. Because uh, essentially, a, uh, this class here is nothing but a blueprint that we're going to create objects from multiple instances of a renter. Uh, and we'll talk about that process in the, in the next video.